Hey guys, it's your girl Priscilla Ono, and today I'm here with my girl Lisa. Hi. Hi. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys all my favorite tips and tricks on how to do foundation and concealer on mature skin. Now her skin is already prepped. For mature skin, you wanna make sure that you are really hydrating the skin so it's nice and moist before you apply any kind of makeup products. I'm gonna take a little bit of the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer, and I'm gonna take my full body foundation brush, and I'm just going to apply this all over her face. It actually gives some really nice hydrating qualities at the beginning of the application, but as it dries, it has this really nice soft matte finish that's actually gonna help your makeup last longer. I'm gonna take my palette and I'm gonna be using Pro Filter Foundation in the color 170. Now you guys know one of my favorite tricks, I like to just put a couple of drops of face oil. This is gonna help it go on really smooth and look very hydrating on the face. So now I'm gonna start to apply this on the skin. When I apply this, I like to do a really nice thin coat first. Now the great thing about the Pro Filter Foundation is that it layers up, so it gives you that medium to full coverage. That way, if you wanna go back in and layer on areas that are a little bit more red, you can. So Lisa, when you do your makeup, what do you usually do? Like what's your foundation routine consist of? I just switched over from a sponge to a brush. You did? So I'm interested to see how you do it. <laughs> Why did you switch over from sponge to brush? Um, I changed to, I think, probably more of a similar foundation to what you're using and it's thicker. Mm -hmm. So I put it on my skin now and then use the brush. I do prefer to use more of a denser brush when I'm applying foundation on mature skin over a sponge just because I really like buffing so it doesn't settle into any of those little creases. So using a dense brush like our full body foundation brush is key. I'm gonna be taking the Pro Filter Concealer in the shade 170. I don't want it to look too light under her eyes. I wanna give her a slight brightness, but not too much. So that's why I picked out her corresponding color. But feel free if you want a little bit of brightness, you can go ahead and go one to two shades lighter. I feel like she needs it a little more so on the inside of her eyes in this area here, on the outside as well. And normally when I do concealer, I usually dot it on right at the darker line, but because she doesn't have it, I'm not gonna do it. So don't place product where you don't need it because that's when you develop creasing and you develop fine lines that show up is because you're actually applying too much product on areas that you really don't need. Do it to what works for you. So again, taking this magical wand down the bridge of the nose, on the tip of the nose, on the chin, and then I like to go sideways to kind of give this, these nice little stripes that are gonna help brighten up the forehead area. So now I'm gonna be taking the concealer brush that has this great density to it that just helps seamlessly blend in your concealer. You don't get any settling in the fine lines, which I love. And just taking that concealer up in that area, which is really nice because it really opens up and brightens up the eyes as well. And voila, you have this beautiful, flawless, bright under eye without it looking cakey and it's definitely not gonna settle, especially after I set it. Now to blend out the rest of the concealer area that I applied on her T-zone area, I'm gonna take the Lil Precision Sponge Duo and I'm gonna be taking the pointier one and I prefer to use the sponge while it's damp over the brush just because it gives you more of like that nice seamless blend. I feel like under the eye you wanna be a little bit more precise and when you're blending out in the T-zone area, you kinda of want everything to blend into the foundation. You don't wanna to be too precise with it because then you'll be able to see it. So now we're gonna add a little bit of warmth into the skin and we're gonna give a little bit of a contour and I'm gonna be taking our Matchsticks Matte in the color Amber and I'm gonna take some of this and apply it on the back of my hand and then I'm gonna pick it up with the full body foundation brush and I'm gonna to start to add it in all the areas that I want to give a little bit of contour too. So definitely cheekbone areas along the forehead and underneath the chin and jawline. If you tend to do all the little markings when you're working on mature skin, sometimes this can settle into the fine lines and wrinkles because you're putting too much product on those areas. So you wanna make sure that you're actually picking up with your brush and then applying it on the skin just to get more of that seamless, flawless finish. Do you contour? Normally? I do. I use a little bit of a darker shade than my foundation and I just do it on my cheekbones and up here. And what's one thing that you hate that makeup does? Like, is there something that you're, you dislike about makeup? Things I, that, that go wrong that you're like, oh, I wish it could be better. Sometimes it's getting ready in the morning when it's still dark mm -hmm. and then I get to work and I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, ooh. I need, I need better lighting. Oh. <laughs> um, sometimes I just put too much on. Too much on? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot of people's mistake is they put too much makeup 
they feel like they need it just because they see other people doing it, so they just start doing way too much. Yeah. And they realize that later when it starts to settle in the creases. And so I, I think less is more, just applying it exactly where you need it is just the best way to go. Now I'm gonna go in with another matchstick, and this is Matchstick in Yacht Life, which is a shimmer stick. And one of the biggest misconceptions is that mature skin can't wear shimmer. For the most part, as long as you're applying it strategically, you're gonna be okay. And I feel like mature skin should be able to wear shimmer if they want to. So I'm gonna show you guys how to properly do it. Apply some of that in the back of my hand, and then I'm gonna scoop it up, and I am going to make sure that I am not applying any of it where I see any of her fine lines or wrinkles. Cause that's when you start to see it settle in. But if you strategically place it, especially on the apples of the cheek, it actually gives a more youthful appearance, which I love. And this color is so beautiful on her skin tone. I feel like it just brings her blue eyes out even more. You know, when I'm doing mature skin, I do prefer to do more creams over powders, especially when it comes to blushes and highlighters, just because usually mature skin is a little more dry. So this is actually a little bit more hydrating. But I do notice that when things are too creamy, it settles in the creases. For me, the matchsticks are like that perfect happy medium to where they're creamy in the beginning when you're applying them, which is great. Then they have this really nice soft matte finish so it's actually not going to get settled in the lines it's actually almost kind of like a self-setting product so it actually lasts longer when you do your makeup do you usually use any powder no I'm a little scared of powder right I think it's gonna settle in my creases. right and honestly sometimes I feel like you don't need to put too much powder on mm -hmm. um, especially when you use something that's more of like a soft matte base and especially when you have more of a dry skin, right. if you don't need the powder, then you don't really have to apply any on there. I'm gonna show you how to apply powder to where it's gonna set your makeup, but it's not gonna make you feel dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Pro Filter Setting Powder, and I'm gonna take the Powder Puff Brush, and I'm using the color Butter on Lisa, and I'm gonna to start to apply this only on the areas that usually get too shiny or oily throughout the day. And that's usually on the forehead, and on the laugh line area, on the chin, and right on top of the upper lip. And the great thing about the Pro Filter setting powder is that it's very thin, so you're not getting too much of that powdery feel. This is the perfect powder for Lisa's skin. Anyone out there that's really dry or that has a more mature skin that's afraid of using too much powder, this is the powder that you're gonna love for setting your foundation. Now we're gonna set underneath the eyes, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the little precision sponge, the pointier one, and I'm just going to kind of bounce this on top and just make sure that we don't have any settling underneath the eyes, because we don't wanna set that. And then what I'm gonna do is a little trick I like to do. I like to take the blending eyeshadow brush, and I like to take a little bit of the Pro Filter setting powder, and this one is in the color Butter, and I'm just gonna take some of that and I'm just gonna dust it underneath her eyes just to kind of set her under eye area, but because I'm using this more precise eyeshadow brush, I'm not getting too much powder under the eyes, which can sometimes settle in and crease and make the under eyes look more scaly and more creasy than they actually are. So now I'm gonna do the lip, and she does have a little bit of gloss bomb and fussy on right now as a lip moisturizer, because of that beautiful shea butter that's in the formula. I actually like to put it on before I do makeup. Now I'm gonna layer it with a little bit of Yacht Life. The same color that I used on her cheeks, I'm just gonna put a little bit on the lip. I love to match the lip to the cheek. I feel like it just ties the look in together. And then I'm gonna layer another coat of Fussy right on top of that to give the ultimate shine. Now to help prevent any kind of feathering on your lip, a little trick that I like to do is I like to take some of the concealer so her color is 170. I'm gonna take that on a flat eyeshadow brush and I am going to go around her mouth and set a little barrier so that her lip stays on and doesn't feather. It also helps highlight the lips too, which makes them look a little poutier. Okay, Lisa, are you ready to see the finished look? Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Amazing. I love the, the way that the lips match the cheeks. Isn't that so nice? Yes. And it makes your eyes pop even more. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure that you comment below and let me know what kind of videos you want to see next. Until next time, bye. bye.